What's going on guys, Killer6 back with another Borderlands Top 10 video for you, and this time we're taking a look at the Top 10 Legendary Items in Borderlands 3. This list will include the best of each weapon type, best shield, best grenade, best class mod for each character, and the best artifact. I'll also include some honorable mentions with each of these items. If you enjoy these types of videos, then please take a second to tap that subscribe button for more. With that, let's get started. Number 10. Coming in at number 10 on this list, let's start things off with rocket launchers. Much like in Borderlands 2, launchers in Borderlands 3 boils down to a small list of useful launchers, the best of which is the back burner. This Vladov launcher can be shot fairly fast, it does huge damage, and it tends to mess up enemies nearby via the singularity effect and the Merv orbs that it creates. This launcher can be farmed only from the Agonizer 9000 in the Guts of Carnivore on Pandora, while on Mayhem 6 or higher. Honorable mentions for this category go to the Plague Bearer, the Ion Cannon, and the Major Kong. Number nine. Coming in at number 9, we're moving on to grenade mods. Now, sadly, grenade mods in Borderlands 3 largely leave a bit to be desired. They're mainly used to proc anointment perks and maybe rip shields on enemies, but there's one grenade that's usefulness exceeds all others. The It's Piss Grenade. This grenade can be used to remove status effects from yourself and teammates, and it can be used on enemies to cause them to take 20% more damage from all sources for 6 seconds at a time. This obviously makes this grenade great for bosses with huge health bars. The Piss Grenade grenade can only be obtained from Sloth and Conrad's Hold on Pandora. Honorable mentions go to the Hex, Lightspeed, and Hunter Seeker grenades. Number 8. Coming in at number 8 are the artifacts. Now in Borderlands 3, there are a lot of useful artifacts, and they're mostly all situational, whether you're fighting a boss or just mobbing or doing something else in between there. But with that said, there's one artifact that's more useful in most situations, and for more characters than any other, and that is the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. This artifact allows you to stack damage damage via consecutive hits on enemies, 1% per hit up to 15%, and then at 15 stacks it adds 90% more on top of that. The trick to that though is you can use grenades and damage over time effects to keep stacking that effect up, allowing you to do very high damage at all times. The Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge can only be obtained as a quest reward in the second DLC. It's given to you by Claptrap for completing the Call of Githian quest. Honorable mentions in this category go to the Auto Idol, the Victory Rush, and the White Elephant, and note that each of those will spawn with a prefix that will further affect how they work, so finding the right combination is what makes them so good. Number seven. Coming in at number 7, let's take a look at shotguns. Now, this is one of my favorite weapon types in most games, and shotguns allow you to get right up in your enemy's face and see the look of terror in their eyes as you wipe them off the face of the planet. The Hellwalker, after its buff in September 2020, is by far one of the most fun and exciting weapons I've ever used in any video game ever. If you find a Hellwalker in normal mode on Borderlands 3, then you will be able to use it for probably 20 or 30 plus levels, one-shotting most mob enemies and making bosses tremble in fear even if they mostly resist incendiary damage. The Hellwalker can world drop or it can be farmed from Road Dog in the Splinterlands on Pandora. Be aware that it will take you a while sometimes to get this thing to drop. Honorable mentions go to the Reflux, the Recursion, and the Face Puncher, which would probably be the number one pick for the shotguns if everybody had identical Guardian rank. Number six. Coming in at number 6 is my pick for the best sniper rifle in the game, and for me, that's the Boogeyman. Now this was a tough one for me to pick because there are some really fun snipers in this game, and I love Jacob snipers, but it's hard to argue with a high fire rate, laser accurate Vladov sniper that has a high chance to not consume ammo, and occasionally spawns Boogeyman skulls that seek out enemies and do even more damage. And if you're lucky enough to get an annexed version with a 300 over 90 annoyment like I did, then you're going to have a lot of fun with this gun. The Boogeyman skulls will take a advantage of that 300 over 90 anointment when they hit enemies this means you can sometimes just sit back and watch the skulls eliminate the entire battlefield the boogeyman can only be obtained by extracting it from the arms race dlc where it can be found in these chests frequently it can also drop from random enemies in the arms race or the final boss honorable mentions in the sniper category go to the skull masher the krakatoa the unseen threat the sandhawk and the complex root Coming in at number 5 is my pick for the best assault rifle in Borderlands 3, and unlike the snipers, this one was a very clear and easy choice. The Monarch, it is an absolute beast of a weapon. High fire rate, massive damage, and it just feels good to shoot this thing. Switching this gun to bipod mode is what makes it so powerful, because that doubles your damage. It can roll with a x4 variant or a x8 variant projectile count as well. This gun can be used with great effect on large targets, or even small ones, but you need to treat this gun like a shotgun at that point and get right up in their face to 
maximize your shots on target. The Monarch can only be obtained on Mayhem 6 and above from Kilovolt in Lectra City on Promethea. Honorable mentions in the Assault Rifle category go to the buffed Shredifier, especially if you find one with a Super Prefix, the Boom Prefixed Sickle, aka the Boom Sickle, and the OPQ system, which was only available during the Revenge of the Cartels event, and it's locked at level 57, but it is still tearing people up at level 65. Number four. Coming in at number four, let's talk about shields. For the better part of the first six months of Borderlands 3, the Transformer shield was almost exclusively the only shield that anybody wore. But luckily with time and more content came better options. And my pick for the best shield in Borderlands 3 is the Old God. The Old God shield will always roll with one of the elements on it as a 25% elemental resistance for the wearer, as well as a 20% boost of that element for the wearer of the shield. Note that you have to be using a weapon that has that element to get the boost. This makes the old god great for firing the skagged in Moe's, Flak, who doesn't have very many elemental damage perks to begin with, Amara to boost all of her existing elemental perks, and even Zane, who can make great use of this with the right element. All of that said, much like artifacts, shields can be very situational. So while I feel like the old god is one of the best all around shields, it's always a good idea to stock yourself with some other variety on shields as well. The old god is a DLC 2 exclusive item and does not have a dedicated drop source, but can be most easily farmed from either the Empowered Gron or Tom and Zam. Honorable mentions for the shield category go to the Transformer Shield, the version 0.M, and the Plus Ultra. Number three. At number three, let's talk class mods. Now, obviously this one's tricky since there's four playable characters and each one will have their own best class mod. So let's break it down just like that. Four winners in this category. For Zane, this one's easy. Sea and Dead class mod from DLC1 is a clear winner. This one gives Zane all of his kill skills just by shooting enemies, making Zane nearly invincible and a absolute beast of a killing machine. For Amara, it's a little bit trickier, but the Phase Zerker is probably her most all around useful class mod and that one can actually be obtained as a world drop in the base game. For Moe's, there are so many good class mod options that it's almost not even fair to the other Vault Hunters, but I'm going to go with the Minesweeper. Hitting crits will give you a chance at a micro grenade spawning, and with Moe's, that means a lot of extra damage. This is the absolute boss killing class mod for Moe's mains, but it's also very strong for mobbing too. Finally, Flak also has some decent class mods, but probably the best all around option is the Bounty Hunter. This one gives you 3% chance to activate hunt skills with gun damage and most flak mains use high projectile count weapons, meaning that they're very likely to trigger that 3% chance on a regular basis. This class mod also treats boss like they're regular enemies, and in terms of your hunt skills, that means a lot more damage. It's a very fun and a very strong class mod. Honorable mentions for each character, Zane is the spy in the executor class mods, for Amara it's the muse in the spiritual driver, for Moe's the blast master and the sapper, for flak the cosmic stalker and the stack bot. Number two. Coming in at number two on this list is my pick for the best SMG in Borderlands 3, and before the release of Arms Race, this was an easy pick, but now that the Plasma Coil exists, it's really hard to argue with that being the best all-around SMG in the game. That said, it's not so distant cousin, the Flipper is an absolute beast as well. So my pick is going to be the Plasma Coil, but if you want to argue that the Flipper is better, I absolutely will not disagree with you. Both are extremely strong, and one thing the Flipper offers to players that the Plasma Coil doesn't is elemental variety. Variety. On the Plasma Coil, you're locked to either Shock or Radiation, but the Flipper can spawn with any of the elements. The Plasma Coil can only be obtained from the Arms Race DLC, and the Flipper can World Drop in DLC 3, or be obtained from Manosaur in the Blood Sun Canyon map. Other honorable mentions for SMGs go to the Smog, the Chaosin, and the Redistributor. Number one. Finally, coming in at number one are the pistols. And in Borderlands 3, there are some really, really good options in this category. My pick for the best pistol in the game, though, has to be the Light Show from DLC 3. And before the comments start rolling in, yes, I've used the Tizzy. Yes, I know it literally melts bosses. But to me, the Light Show is the best all around weapon in the game for a number of reasons. It's useful for all four Vault Hunters. It's insanely strong without using up all of your ammo to be strong. It comes in all the elements and it's ridiculously easy to farm a good variant. Being a Bounty of Blood legendary means that it has the best drop percentages of any of the items in any of the DLCs or base game at a 33% drop chance. This means on average, you should get a light show on every third run, give or take. The Tizzy, meanwhile, requires you to do arms race and each run on that content can take upwards of 30 minutes. That said, the Tizzy is an absolute destroyer of worlds and I don't fault anybody that wants to place that at number one, 
despite my reasoning to the contrary. You can farm the light show from Laser Dactyl and the Bounty of Blood DLC, or get it as a world drop in that same DLC. You can farm the Tizzy and the Arms Race DLC from these chests, or from the boss, or even get it as a world drop in that DLC. Honorable mentions for pistols go to the Beacon, the Maggie, the Hellshock, Seventh Sense, Gargoyle, Miscreant, and Unkempt Herald, but there's so many other good ones that I could like go on and on. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of legendary gear in Borderlands 3. If you did, then hitting that like button would be greatly appreciated. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite item is, and don't forget to subscribe for more Borderlands content, including playthroughs, top 10s, item guides, and consistent hot fix and patch note videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.